Hey you, and welcome. My name is Mike, and in 2019, an investigation began when a woman was found just outside her home. She had been in the Arkansas State Senate, and, and would make quite a name for herself. A name that in 2019 would become even bigger in the small city of Pocahontas. The investigation would reveal a sinister plot, and a whole list of good old suspects which we will go through. Some are honestly very strange, and kind of stupid in, in what they did. For example, dressed as a ghost. It's a weird one. Let's give it a go. Pocahontas is a city in northern Arkansas and named... I mean, <laughs> named after the only Pocahontas I know. Are there many Pocahontases? Well, now we have two. It's home to about 7,000 people, and I know you're just like waiting with bated breath to hear more about the city of Pocahontas, but this old video is not sponsored by their tourism department. Though I'm open to offers. The day was June 4th, 2019, and two men were walking up to a house in that city. See, the woman who lived there, well, it was one of the men's mothers, and the other, his daughter, and they were, they were quite worried about her. She had been, like, completely radio silent for about a week uh, at this stage, you know, and, and she was a local prominent figure. She had appointments, she had places to be, she had shit to do, but she wasn't doing a single thing. So it was not like her to, to completely just go off the, you know, boop, 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 radar. They arrived at the house, and it was quiet, yet her truck was outside, unlocked. It was then they discovered that the door of the, of the rear of the house, it was open, so they kind of... You know, went in covert like they snooped around. Now the house again, dead quiet inside. Now, now the house was actually being uh, renovated at the time, so it was a bit of a mess, bit of a pigsty. But they still couldn't find anything, couldn't find any sign of her. But they did find something very interesting. In the kitchen, this was on the floor. Liquid had spilled and it had stained. It was dark and it wasn't chocolate milk. They locked up the house and they started walking around outside, back to their cars, down the drive, thinking, okay, maybe we should just call the cops and have a proper missing persons investigation, like, begin. It was then they got a whiff of something bad. Like, something dead. dead. That, that really overpowering scent of death and decay. They then noticed the tarp covering some construction equipment. Maybe a rat had gotten in and died or something like that. Lifting it up, a swarm of flies just emerged, blinding them. And then trying to see through all that, they saw... Down there, there was a person. Face down, wrapped in a blanket, and it looked like she had been there for some time. We've been trying to find her for the last few days, almost a week, and we've not heard from her. Uh, what is your name, honey? Butch Smith, I'm her son. We came to do a wellness check at her house. I think I found a body. Okay, honey, we'll, we'll get an ambulance headed that way, okay? An investigation is underway after a body was found in the Pocahontas home of former state senator Linda Collins Smith. Authorities held a brief press conference Wednesday in Randolph County. The Arkansas State Police Criminal Investigation Division was dispatched to the scene along with forensic examiners from the Arkansas State Crime Lab in Little Rock. The body has been sent. Linda Collins Smith in 2019 was 57 years of age, a native of Pocahontas, born and reared. She grew up in a very poor family as a teen, you know, growing up just outside the city. She lived on a dirt road and her house didn't even have running water when she was growing up, but you know, through some of that good old grit, determination, bootstraps, wear pulled, she would eventually become a realtor, a businesswoman, running a good old days in, then Arkansas House of Representatives, and then state senator. This was in 2015, and she was known as the linebacker for her fearless attitude. She served four years, 2015 to 2019. I will continue to represent the people of my district with the same fervor and commitment that they expect and deserve. Hello, I'm Linda Collins Smith. During disasters, phone lines can often become overwhelmed. To reach loved ones, use Safe America's texting shorthand. Text the letters, are you okay? and encourage them to respond by texting I am okay if they're safe. In 2019, she got the boot. The governor supported her like rivals, so it's like, 
well, f me then. Now that was a tough time for Linda Collins Smith. Obviously, she lost her senatorialship that thing. She also happened to be going like in the midst of this very, very acrimonious and tough divorce from her husband, Phil Smith. Linda, she had two grown-up children, a boy and a girl, and they were rocks for her. So when she lost her position as a senator, she moved from Little Rock back to Pocahontas. Pocahontas, here I come. She started dating a new fella and was looking for work as a lobbyist. She in fact had gone to DC to look for work there. She did an interview and it went tickety-boo. And then shortly after coming back to Pocahontas from Washington DC, she vanished. She like she arrived on the evening. The next day she no nothing. When they last spoke to Linda, things seemed fine, but then pretty soon texts, calls went unanswered, unranged, on everything. She was supposed to be places. She had appointments and she missed every single one. That was when her son and her father rocked up to her house. Which you know, they believe was almost a week after something, I mean, she was killed. It was evident it was a murder from the start. It's not like she threw herself in there. So the police arrived and a crime scene investigation, it began. Have y'all been inside the home? Yes. Yes, we have. There's going to be something up with this. Uh, we are going to need CID out here. You can do it to this stump if you want. We'll wait till my sheriff gets here. Uh, okay. But yeah, we're going to need in there. Okay. So. A former state senator murdered in her house. You know, the mind starts spinning. Was it political? Some shit like that? You know, good old murder, politics, intrigue, something, something? I mean, I don't really care for politics. Because they all kind of suck. But maybe somebody thought that and took it to the extreme. By all accounts, Linda, good mom, beloved in community, not enough to get re-elected, but, you know, well, you know. She grit, she was tough, and she worked hard. If you didn't like her, you sure as shit respected her, so who would? Well, I mean, that's the whole point of the thing. So you got that, and then you got the recent end to her marriage. She'd been married to her husband, Phil, for 23 years before they decided to snip, snip. So after 23 years, is a long ass time to be alone again. And now she was gone, stabbed to death in her home, attacked her in her kitchen, and then her body dragged outside. At the scene, there was a fair bit to go off of from Jump Street. There were signs of a cleanup in the house, but the place was already in bits, so there was only so much they could do. No sign of forced entry, though, again, doesn't need to be. Cameras had been removed, a number of them. The brackets were still there, though, but someone wanted to make sure this wouldn't be recorded. Soon friends, you know, loved ones, they raced to the scene to try and, I mean, obviously heartbroken, completely heartbroken, and then, you know, try and tell the police anything they could about what they knew could have possibly happened. Her friend Tim, and Tim's girlfriend Becky, who helped on her campaigns, was her PA, and they ran a hotel together. It was Linda's closest friend. And I know you're upset, and I don't want to upset you anymore. <laughs> I know, Miss Becky. I know it's hard. <laughs> she was my best friend. I started out <laughs> working for her as her personal assistant. I went out there, and she told me all about the night before because the man out there, Rendell, spent the night with her. When I left, she was mad at me. Why was she mad at you? As I was buttoning in her personal life. So I didn't think anything about her not talking to me this week because she's done that before. Did Linda have enemies? I mean, she's a senator. I mean, surely she takes some people off. So. Oh, I'm sure she took yeah. people off every day. She took me off. Becky had picked her up from the airport when she came back from DC on the 27th of May. She had dropped her back, Linda back to her house, and then the next day Becky had returned and they had lunch together. Linda spoke a little bit about, you know, what was going on in her life, you know, right before she was murdered. She mentioned a Rendell character who was like her new beau. She was saying, you know, he had stayed over the night before. Linda and Becky had a bit of an argument about this character. But then you got Rendell. Who the shit was he? Who's this mysterious character who, whose name kind of should be Randall, but it's not. What's going on there? Well, it turned out he was an old flame and he had been one of the last people to see her. Kissed, he left, and then his further texts would go unanswered. Now this Rendell character would be quickly cleared by the police, he just wasn't in the area at times believed she had been killed. So it seems he was one of the last people to see her, but not, you know, THE last. So who was next on the suspect list? Well, how about the other fellow? Because it's always the fellows. Even that fellow saying it's always the fellows. How about ex-husband Phil Smith? He was a judge, stepfather to her kids for over two decades. The marriage was strong for a long time, but the love was lost. 
It became more of like a business arrangement, you know, than a marriage. They made a good partnership. They were a tour de force, or a tour de France, or whatever the phrase is. But you know, there was no kind of like spark in between them at all. They had lots of businesses, they had millions of dollars, but just, you know, none of that little, little, little you know, hanky-panky. And then the divorce began. The divorce, you know, which was entangled in the myriad businesses they ran together, which became hugely contentious because everything becomes contentious when money is fucking involved. It doesn't even, it seems in these cases, it doesn't matter who you're, you know, having an argument with about. Could be your best friend of a hundred years. As soon as money comes involved, it was hard. And it became ugly with Linda costing him his career at one point. She cost him his career when she told people that, you know, Phil, who, who was a judge, she, she caught him, uh, you know, having a good time at work. Yeah, she, she found him, she found him like in the back of the courtroom, jerking off. Yeah, he was having a great, uh, yeah. I'm going to ask you a sticky question only because it's been presented to me and okay. I believe it's an issue. It's fine. Have you ever viewed pornography on that computer in yes. your office? You have. Mm -hmm. You ask the question, have you ever? And the answer to that is yes. Okay. But not in a long time. And as a matter of fact, well, that's fine. However you got Okay. You, you can ask the questions and I'll answer them. <laughs> I wonder if he's beaten off in his judge's ropes. That cost him his career and they would get mutual restraining orders. And during the investigation, her fear of his retribution was something which came up again and again. I'm going to tell you another thing. Linda was scared to death of him. Scared of Phil? Of Phil. Linda was deathly afraid of Phil for whatever reason. She felt scared that he was going to do something. Everybody I've talked to says she's scared to get the feel. She is. What happened? I keep her? thinking she's going to get mad at me for telling this stuff. No. <laughs> she wouldn't get mad at you. <laughs> Phil used to hit her. Phil used to hit her. Do you think your mom's scary, your dad? Was yes. scary, dad? Yes. He did. Yes. I you did. really believe there was a fear there. Absolutely. It wasn't an act. It was a fear there. I fully believe, firmly, firmly, with all, everything, believe that she was afraid of him. He said that her and Will just recently divorced. Oh, right. I don't know if you knew that. The cameras that were at her home, that was for him. Now, he denied anything. He said he never hit her. He was never violent or negative or anything like towards her. Yes, the divorce was shitty, but, you know, it was never personal or harmful. I mean, she did tell people he was whacking off at work, though, so it's kind of like, oof. Coming up tonight at 6, former state senator Linda Collins-Smith found dead and unrecognizable outside of her home. What the Randolph County Sheriff is sharing about the investigation tonight on KRK4 News. So, the cameras. Now, funny thing about camera kids cameras these days don't you know they uh you know it's all in the cloud the, the footage is not stored locally it's all in the ether in i don't know how it works do you so it didn't matter the cameras was, were removed the footage could still be accessed by the investigators and accessed it was and they'd seen on may 28th the day linda was killed becky had indeed been over just as she said becky had been home all that day then becky left then, hours later, the cameras captured screams coming from Linda's home. Soon after, a g -g -g ghost was seen walking into the house. Someone or something was hiding themselves with a sheet from the cameras, which is absolutely the best way to try and hide yourself from cameras. Then, continuing scrolling through through the, the very the long ass hours of footage, they saw this. Becky, with blood on her, putting a knife in her bag. Full face view. Big ol' lip licker face on her. She looked pretty anxious. Arrested while she was on her way to the church service for Linda was Becky O'Donnell. Hi, Becky. Sit right here. I'm gonna lay it all out there for you, okay? We're here about Linda. About the death of her. 
So tell me what you know. That you're right. That you're right, though. We're gonna get we're gonna respect that right. But I want you to know you realize right then. You're under the risk of the murderer, Linda. You understand that? We got you. We got you. We got video of you. You didn't erase them all. We got you. You can quit playing stupid now. We got you. If you're not free to go, you're gonna go to jail. Stand up. But Becky's answer, you know, when confronted with this, uh, are you dumb? Linda asked me to cut up chicken. Boo. That's why uh, I have a big old knife in my hand. She asked me to just prepare some 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 chicken cutlets, and then I put the knife in my bag because I wanted to save it for later. Myself, I was only interested in the salmonella, and I'm not covered in blood. Like it looks like my hands, and I'm wiping it off. That's not blood at all. That's um. Uh, CGI. You f***ers are CGI'ing me. Then she removed the cameras because uh, Linda asked her to. The cameras were broken. That's why I took them down. This morning, new charges filed against the woman accused of killing Arkansas State Senator Linda Collins Smith. A former campaign staffer and close friend of the senator, Rebecca Lynn O'Donnell, facing charges of capital murder, abuse of Colin Smith's body, and tampering with physical evidence. O'Donnell was arrested Friday afternoon following a traffic stop. The investigation is presently at a critical juncture, and no further information will be released at this time until we are confident that it will not compromise the integrity of the criminal investigation. Now, a number of things were off about, about good old Becky O'Donnell over here. It had been for a while that pretty much just all revolved around, you know, forged checks. I'm talking about she'd forged Linda's signature multiple times. She was her PA, she was her driver, she was her business associate, and she had, it's believed, been stealing money from, from Linda for years. Ever since their friendship began, pretty much. She helped run Linda's motel, she was padding up her paychecks, and then maybe Linda confronted Becky about this, knife came out. Becky was a local of Pocahontas, and had met Linda through her boyfriend. Then somehow she needled her way into being Linda's best BFF five ever. It started when Becky helped set up the security system for Linda, Linda who was afraid of her ex-husband, and then from there it all sprang out. By all accounts, they were best friends together, they vacationed together, they were described as being exceptionally close. And it's always those who were exceptionally close that kind of like, you know, F you and the B in the end. Unfortunately, it appears Becky had ulterior motives, as they say. She wasn't interested in getting close to Linda, she was interested in getting close to Linda's money. But I mean, you know, it's like Linda, state senator, it's not like Linda was like really, really rich or anything, like super wealthy. Um, I kind of feel like Becky was probably just an opportunist. An opportunist who saw her way to worm her way into somebody's inner circle and, well, you know, took advantage of it. Now, Becky, she had a little bit of a history. She had been arrested for theft once before. Uh, she also had been uh, accused of trying to solicit a murder for hire to kill her ex-husband. Yeah. But when, you know, she was questioned about that, she just said, you know, I was drunk. I wasn't serious. If you're serious, I definitely wasn't serious. Becky O'Donnell pleaded not guilty. And while she was in jail awaiting trial, her soliciting a murder for hire would come up again. Inmates would come forward about little jobs, little bit of jabaroonies. Uh, Becky was asking around if anybody would be interested in, you know, taking on. Um, she, now, Becky, of course, when she was in jail, talking to other inmates, she was like, no, I'm completely innocent of uh, all Linda's, Linda's murder. Didn't do it. Not at all. Who, me? No. Um, but, you know, if you would be interested in helping me maybe kill some other people who might be involved in it, I'd be happy about that. She wanted uh, Phil Smith dead, Linda's ex-husband. She was like, okay, can you kill him and then make it look like he kind of did it himself? He was certainly used to doing it to himself. And then maybe leave a note saying he'd kill Linda and couldn't live with himself. That old one, she wanted a prosecutor dead. Um, she actually wanted a prosecutor killed in a car explosion because hopefully the car explosion would get if there's any juicy bits and bobs in the prosecutor's car, talking evidence, that would go too. Judge needed to go. She wanted also some computer nerd over here to upload a virus to the county jail and also to the police's systems to just delete any evidence they had at all on her and any all all the stuff they had on her just delete it with a, some kind of virus. I don't I don't know, but um, she had a whole litany of lists of like yeah I need this done this done this done. But by the way, I am innocent. So that didn't that didn't go well for her uh, at all. 
O'Donnell tried to get several of her fellow inmates to murder Linda Collins' ex-husband, Phil Smith, and planting a suicide note, making it appear as if Smith was the true murderer. That never panned out because those inmates went to investigators, and as they talked, investigators learned that O'Donnell admitted to appearing on camera, bloody knife in hand. But she claimed that knife was for a chicken, and that investigators doctored the video. The Becky would plead guilty to first-degree murder to avoid the death penalty. Hard to argue around your face with a bloody knife, let's be honest. I went over to Linda's house and I intentionally killed her and concealed her body. And she also pled guilty to two counts of solicitation to commit murder. A trial in such a high profile case would not have gone well for her. That's very, very true. She was sentenced to 50 years in prison. And that is the story of Linda Collins Smith and Becky O'Donnell. A case again of just, you know, people who were so close, exceptionally close. Being betrayed. It's not a story of uh, betrayal because everything just revolves around money. It always does. Even good old life. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could just like not kill though for money. You could just get a job. Probably be a lot easier. But then how else would you get the stupidest footage a killer has ever taken of themselves? I mean, it's a hard one to beat. Round of fair, fair play to you. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. You guys are great. It means a lot to me uh, that you're watching this whole video. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you real soon in the next little one, which will be a couple of days. So I look forward to that. But until then, please take care of each other and yourselves. Because I love you. Mike out. <laughs>